went Zooks Off-Road. Yeah, it's been about a year since you saw Oruzik on the Zooks Off-Road channel here. Thanks for your positive feedback on that too. During the time that's passed, there have been a lot of changes and some adventures too. In this video, I'll be telling you about the changes on the trailer I named Pelcondo, changes in Oruzik himself, a couple of recent adventures, some backstory, and the changing plans for the eclipse trip. The version of my little trailer that you saw in the video last year was about to be replaced by a more capable and durable one. I wanted the original to be light since it was going to be pulled behind a version of Orozuk that had a 1.6 liter 8 valve G16A engine producing only 80 horsepower and that would be on a good day. By the way, that was an improvement over the 63 horsepower that was made by the stock 1.3 liter G13A engine. That's why the trailer was made of aluminum tubing that I was able to cut and bolt together in my old backyard back in California. But I quickly discovered that the aluminum trailer was underdesigned and not really suitable for off-roading. Myron helped me create a more durable version of Palcondo by giving me access to the fabrication resources here at Zeke's Off-Road. I used SketchUp to model Palcondo 2 in 3D to work out the dimensions for the steel tubing frame. Having that model helped me communicate my vision to Myron and Matt, and before long, the vision became a reality. Palcondo 2 is certainly more durable, but it's also considerably heavier. When Myron saw this, he stepped up and told me that he wanted to sponsor Orozik with a rebuilt Suzuki J20A engine. That's the engine that they put in the Vitara and Arios back in 1999 to 2004. This news blew me away, but I quickly regained my wits and just said, thank you, Myron. So I pulled the tired old 1.6 with its poor compression to make way for the new 2.0. And then things got really interesting. Zook's off-road is a busy place. There's always a lot going on here. With that in mind, Myron let me know that the regular crew here would be working on other projects and that I would be in charge of the engine swap. He explained that while this shop is expert in all things G-Series, the J-Series engines were uncharted territory here. This was daunting news to me, especially considering I'm not a mechanic. Maybe Myron was betting on my odds for success, considering that I'm also not an auto body guy, but during the previous year I had removed the damaged tin top body that Oruzuk had and replaced it with the convertible body that we have today. So here's the backstory I mentioned earlier, just to get you caught up. Yes, Oruzuk began as a hard top. Once I had the build in that form fairly complete, I took a trip to Death Valley with my friend Roman Mojave back around Thanksgiving of 2018. And that trip started out great, and then I made two big mistakes. I didn't ask to be spotted, and I picked a really bad line. The results were not good, and I've been dealing with the alternatives in the aftermath ever since. These photos show why I call the hardtop body a total. I was pretty discouraged by the whole thing and briefly considered taking up a new hobby. But then I had a change of heart when I found the body and frame from a 1986 convertible and began visualizing Oruzuk as a ragtop. <laughs> Some of these ideas made the cut, others didn't. That should bring you up to speed, but hey, if you want to know more about this stuff, leave your questions in the comments, and I'll keep a better eye on them this time coming up. Okay, now that we have that gruesome flashback out of the way, we can get back to the timeline. So I took on the engine swap project. Myron insisted on doing the mission critical stuff like installing the pistons and the rings, the crankshaft, the camshafts, and all the bearings and all of that stuff, and I was really happy to step aside and let him go to town. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got busy pulling bolt-on components from another J20A donor engine in the shop. It also began sourcing things like a new oil pump, new timing set, and other bolt-on parts. I had Myron and Matt looking over my shoulder occasionally and offering advice and encouragement. They also called in expertise from many friends who, of the shop who were experienced in the larger 21st century J-Series engines. John Brown with Zuki Freaks Garage up in Alberta, Canada offered to help by building and sending a custom engine wire harness for the project. I also got advice from Dylan at Trail Tough in Oregon and Casey from Zooks of Hazard over in Texas. The goodness of the Suzuki community that Myron talks about in these videos is a real thing and you can be sure that I'm grateful to be in such good company. Items from the donor engine were cleaned up, painted, I bought belts and hoses and other accessories and put it all together. Little by little the project took shape and my confidence began to grow. Thanks Myron for the vote of confidence 
and for the baptism and fire that came with it. I was warned that the added horsepower of the larger engine would likely expose weak links along the drivetrain. The J20A produces 127 horsepower. Sure enough, during a visit to SoCal, my transfer case started making noises. Since I was back in my old stomping grounds, I went to a shop in Fallbrook that Myron works with where they rebuilt my T-case. They replaced the input shaft and the main shaft. So thanks to those guys for the good, speedy one-day turnaround. Once I had my new setup in sound condition, I couldn't resist heading up to southern Utah for the annual eclipse last October. Here are some highlights from that trip. This build is made for this. Even though Zooks Off-Road is more well-known for crawly and buggy builds, the products and services here will help you build your off-road vehicle to meet your use case, whatever it is. Even with the extra horses from the bigger power plant, Uruzuk wasn't happy with the overpacked trailer and the Samurai, so it's time to replace Palcondo 2 with a downsized and sturdier Palcondo 3. The first step will be to reduce the size of the cargo box by one-third, and then upgrading the timber and axle suspension system from the ASR 400 to the next size up, and that's the ASR 1200, rated at 1200 pounds. The advantages will be less weight, lower wind profile, lots of headroom built into the suspension, as well as trailer hubs, wheels, and tires to replace the scale-down version 2 setup with its motorcycle tires and wheels. In last year's video here, I made a reference to an Eclipse trip that I'm about to take called the Eclipse Pedition. A friend convinced me that I should call it the Eclipse Expedition with an X, and he was right. After all, that puts the word sex right in the middle of the name, and well, you know, that's one change, but an even bigger change is in the viewing destination. My hopes of seeing the Eclipse from Nazos, Durango, Mexico shifted northeast into Texas. I've been caught up in a series of miscommunications between me, insurance companies, state motor vehicle entities, and the U.S. Postal Service. Long story short, I didn't get my passport situation in order. My bad. The duration of totality in Nazos will be longer than anywhere else in North America. One of Myron's subscribers on this channel reached out to me after last year's video with an offer to help if he could. He grew up in Nazos, where his mother still lives in a home right next to the sports stadium where NASA will be setting up shop for the event. So thanks to you, David, and your gracious mother for the invitation. I hope you both enjoy the spectacle and will keep fond memories of when your little town was a global epicenter of this celestial event. So thanks again to Myron and the crew at Zeke's Off-Road. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? Comment and let your Suzuki friends and other off-road friends know about this valuable resource to this Suzuki community. One more thing, why don't we have the new Suzukis here in the U.S. today? Here's why. Shame on you, Consumer Union, for your dishonest treatment of Suzuki Automotive in the U.S. That assassination piece wasn't a product of consumer advocacy. It was advocating something else, but that's a four-letter word, and I won't say it here. Okay, so what about the changes to Orozuk? Well, let's start with this. You notice there's no passenger seat? Who's riding shotgun? How about a refrigerator? A charging station and power storage delivery back around the behind the Targa. That's one change. And then another thing happened too. This is a road shower and it's an aluminum tube that's supposed to be out in the sun all day. The sun heats up the water, you put some air pressure on top of that hot water and you have a hot shower at the end of the day. Well I tried using it on that trip over in um, Death Valley a few years ago and lukewarm would be an exaggeration. So I decided since I had this thing and I wasn't going to be using it for a shower anymore, I turned it into um, a holding tank for air. So I have an air compressor and it's going to speed up airing up the tires and so forth. I've got this air chuck and I've got another one on the other side. So that worked out really well and I'm really happy with that. The rack was here when you saw Oruzik last year. This part up here wasn't. And I decided that I was going to abandon putting the tent up here ever like you saw it before. Instead, it's going to be on the new trailer. And um, you've seen the photos of that by now. That's pretty much it over here. Maybe we should go over and look at the engine.